G'day all, Stix here. Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, I'll preface this video by saying I do not know what I'm doing, and that'll come to light. That's why this is a hack shop and not a professional shop. So what we're going to be doing today is creating a mount for the QA140 Quick Change Tool Post for this Hafco AL320G lathe. There's actually been a, a few questions on how I went about this. Uh, apparently this is quite a well, a relatively popular lathe, but there's not actually all that much information out there about it. Um, so what we can see on the screen there is uh, the stock tool post, um, the hard mount tool post, uh, which comes on the on the lathe on the compound there. And we're having a look over that. So there's a little bit of work that I had to do to uh, mount the QA140 to this lathe, um, as expected. And this is how I went about doing so. So. I'm sure that there are other ways to do this, uh, better methods to doing so, but this is how I did it. So as we can see there, that's the stock stud, and that's been secured just with a screw in there. Uh, the QA140 top nut obviously doesn't fit there. Um, it's using M16 by 1.5. There's the new stud which came with the QA140. Obviously the nut does fit on that because they come as a unit. So screw on there, screw off easy as can be. So the stud with, which comes with the QA140 does fit through uh, the, the compound there um, into the mount point, um, but I didn't think there was a good way of securing that without creating a completely new stud. So what we have there with the key now on the ground um, is the original stud that I created uh, for this thing. Now this came off a bit of uh, some sort of a splined drive shaft, so it was hardened some of the way through. It was a bit of an odd material. I don't know what sort of steel it is, uh, but it's what I had on hand and what I decided to use. So that slots on there nicely, of course. Uh, it's a bit of a tight fit um, for <laughs> for reasons. Um, now that'll come out again, of course, a bit of a tap with the hammer, and off we go. So that stud slides through there. Now it's a 16mm outer diameter. Um, and with, I said, a M16 by 1.5 mil thread on it. Now there's the registering sleeve, so that slides over there. Um, I want to create this tool post again because obviously there's a bit of wobble there and that should be a registration surface. So we're just going to go through and see what the inside diameter of that registration sleeve is what I'm going to call it is. So that's sitting at about 16, we'll spin that around, at about 16.7 millimeters. Now the bore on the compound is 16 width change. Um, so that actually becomes an issue because, well, with a registration sleeve, which is larger than the bore on the compound, um, any sort of stud which is gonna fit in the compound, it's not gonna register nicely uh, with the sleeve. So I will go through and recreate that sleeve also I've run a file over it and it is not hard, it's as soft as can be, um, but what we're going to do here is take some uh, take some dimensions to see what the go is here. The, the bottom uh, the bottom cannibal size 24.8 millimeters and I think we're looking at the depth now which well the depth of the the bottom shoulder there needs to be uh, less than 4.4 millimeters um, which will keep it from interfering with the uh, the fixed part of the compound yeah big old thumbs up for that one all right what are we going to be measuring next actually we're going to confirm that again as 16 ish yep 16 millimeter diameter shaft going up through the uh, the bore there on the compound uh, now mine has a keyway in it the normal uh, the stock stud is secured with a, a grub screw which is drilled and tapped into both the compound and uh, the stud or the bottom shoulder on the stud there so we're just going to be measuring uh, the depth 
or the thickness of the compound on the inside of the shoulder to the top of the compound where the tool post sits, which is 13 millimeters ish these dimensions aren't particularly critical. Um, I'm going to be making this thing to give myself a fair bit of room anyway. So we're looking there at another 113 millimeters from the bottom of the quick change tool post to the top of the nut. And then we're going to give myself, I'm going to give myself an extra 15 millimeters of fudge factor there. Again, these, these dimensions aren't, <laughs> to me, they're not critical. So I'm not bothering too much with them. I'm gonna measure uh, how much thread I need on the top of the stud there. And I'm, again, with FUD Factor, gonna give myself a uh, 30 millimeters worth of thread there, which is 20 revolutions at 1.5, of course. Okay, so yeah, this, <laughs> the nut still goes on. So I'm just gonna have a, a look at that thread now. This stud and the thread form on this stud uh, either it's loose or uh, it's not quite metric and um, what we can see there is that the thread pitch is 1.5 millimeters which is convenient because the lathe is a metric lathe with a metric lead screw and so we can create a 1.5 millimeter thread now it comes in at about I think 15 point 15.7 millimeters on the major diameter there uh, which is a, a loose M16 thread um, but that's what it is and that's what I cut to and that's what works so we're just checking everything there yeah and we're gonna swing back over so what I'm using here is a piece of 33 millimeter hot rolled steel round bar um, nothing else in the original or the aftermarket tool post was hardened so I'm happy going with mild steel my previous stud was uh, some sort of drive shaft which was hardened somewhere through it uh, case and then kind of through the middle in places um, so be it, but I'm going to use my old steel from this new one so what I'm doing now is just reassembling the compound and going through and we're just going to watch this at four times speed for a bit Apologies for the music in the background there. It's actually Jethro Toll, thick as a brick, playing it four times what it should be played at. So it sounds like horrible Nintendo garbage. But it kept me happy while I worked. This lathe, for some reason, uh, for the preload on the compound screw there, um, I don't know if it's a quality control issue or just bad assembly or whatnot, um, but the preload screw was a countersunk Phillips head uh, in the dial wheel which did not have a countersink um, so it looks like absolute trash so I'll probably replace that with a, a cap head screw at some point. I was considering doing that today but I thought I would leave it for next time which is what I do with most of my jobs. So here I'm just getting the, the quick change tool post mounted back onto the compound there. I'm going to get it uh, squared up using the tail stock there. I'll give it a bit of a tighten with the with the spanner. That's a 25 millimeter nut. So once I get that bit of 33 millimeter round bar in there, um, the bore on this lathe is, lathe is 38 millimeters, so I'd pass it straight through. Thought I'd save the material. I have a quick look.
one piece is vibrating all over the place. So what I'll do is quickly lop it off in the bandsaw, uh, give myself a more workable length where it's not going to rock and roll and take everything off of the lathe, and we'll work from there. So we're actually starting the machining now. So we're going to face off the end of that 33mm round bar. We're going to put a number 2 centre drill into the end of it uh, and then the live centre for a bit of support before we take the whole thing down to our 24.8mm diameter which is the, the size of the counter bore in the compound. Uh, one of the issues that I've experienced with my tool holders, these tool holders, um, which I need to replace at some point is uh, because of the shape of them, um, when I've got the live center in there, uh, it doesn't actually give me much room to uh, turn down to small-ish diameters. Uh, the, the the trailing edge of the, the tool holder actually tends to interfere with the live center. So I've started using smaller uh, center drills to try and uh, give myself the maximum offset. But I'm still running into issues, so at some point I'll look to replace the the tool holders and obviously the inserts as well, which should give me a bit more variety as well. I've got the carriage power feed here on the uh, the finest feed, uh, just because I hate uh, going through the change gear system on this particular lathe. Um, I do it when I need to, for threading chiefly, but otherwise I'm happy just to wait for the lathe to do its thing. Uh, so I'm going through and obviously measuring here at a few intervals. Uh, as it turns out, this is cutting a reasonable unwanted taper which I'm just accepting. Uh, I'll look into the reasons why it's doing that at a later point for now. I don't care. I'm actually going inside here to put a hat on because this is spitting hot chips and it's burning me all over the place. Back to a bit of normal speed Jethro Toll there. Uh, so yeah, I'm just checking the... <laughs> checking the... Uh, the sizes there on the... Um, on the bit of round bar that I've turned down. Bit of a stringy chip build up there. I thought I'd leave it go until the end, but it got too much, so I killed it, cut it off, and continued on. This insert was getting a little bit tired, and I obviously had my feed rate not quite right at this point, but uh, it only happened that once, thankfully.
check the measurement again. Uh, and in a moment, I actually go in with uh, the 45 degree chamfer tool. Um, I'm only doing that because, as I said earlier, my tool post can't quite get in close enough with that live center. Uh, so what I'm actually doing is using the 45 degree tool to take out a little bit of the meat from the end of the, uh, the shaft there so I can get my normal tool in. Um, here, the insert, I've decided it has had its day. I tried to show it off to the camera. There's a, a small bit out the end, um, but I've uh, decided to switch that around. Obviously, three cutting faces on those triangular inserts, and then I spend time with my shaking hands trying to reinstall that insert in the tool holder while it's still on the lathe. Terrible decision. Okay, I'm finally happy with the diameter on the uh, the end of the shaft there, so I'm just going to take the tool down to the shoulder. I'm going to put the tool into the shaft a little bit, just to get rid of the uh, the hard edge, so it's actually going to seat into the compound counter bore there. Um, and something, I think the compound here wasn't actually locked off, uh, so there's a number of, well, there's a couple of spring passes there uh, on the y-axis, the in-out axis, um, to try and, well, I'll just keep the cut clean there. Now I specified earlier that I wanted the top 30 uh, millimeters of this uh, this stud threaded. So what I'm going in, what I'm doing now is just going in with that uh, that high speed steel chamfer tool again, and I'm just creating a, a valley uh, for the the thread ending, uh, so I can get in there with the threading tool. change gear time. I hate the change gear setup on this lathe. The circlips or the e-clips are trash. Uh, even the visualization of the gears on this thing is terrible. Um, so I'll, I'll go through and I work it out as does anybody who uses this lathe. Um, the biggest regret that I have about this lathe is that I didn't buy one with a, uh, a quick change gearbox. That would have been a lot more convenient than trying to deal with the pain of this change gear setup. I'm going to fast forward to the future to remove all of this so you don't have to watch me bleed all over the place while I cut myself on these gears. Back in a bit. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is just mark up the end where I'm going to be cutting the thread, a bit of a sharpie, a bit of texture. Uh, check it with the thread gauge. Yep, so change gears are all right. So it is cut cutting at the 1.5 uh, millimeter thread pitch. So going through here, I make an absolute butchery of this. Um, it's amazing how normally this would be fine, and then I turn on a camera and everything goes to complete shit. So I'm looking through now, and there's something uh, a bit later on, just when I'm about to finish cutting this thread, that I, I, I didn't notice while I was doing it, it's only during the video. Uh, I think on the final pass, uh, I start the machine and the, the tailstock uh, kicks up. So I've obviously got the adjustment nut on that not right, uh, which may have been causing the taper earlier, the significant taper.
When it's coming up, I'll slow it down. I'll put it back to normal speed. And there it was. That's an issue that I'll sort out. An issue that I'll fix. Next, we're moving to making sure after a little bit of cleaning up work that the, the nut actually threads onto there properly. And it does. It's a smooth fit. With little play in it. Not a great deal of play. In fact, there's not much play at all there. So I'm happy with that. So what we're going to do next is part off uh, this, this stud section. Um, as I said, we need less than 4.4 millimeters on the bottom shoulder there. So I'm just going to line up the, the parting off tool there and take it to 4 millimeters. Throw a file in there quickly and then the stud is complete. Battery actually dies shortly. And then so I can get this voiceover in. Uh, the final shot is of the piece of uh, the small piece of uh, drive shaft, spline drive shaft that was left that I built my original tool post from. So this one is probably not much of an improvement, uh, but for the purposes of the video, I've created it. Um, I'll be creating the new sleeve for the tool post in the coming days. And I'll also do the video of that and then putting the, the keyway into this, this stud. Apologies for this disjointed video. Uh, as I said, everything turns to shit once I turn the camera on. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and then the editing time took me a little bit as well. First real video, so this is a pretty reasonable learning curve for me. So hopefully the following videos will be better than this one. So thanks for watching to this point or skipping through or doing what you've done. Um, and then I hope to put the new video up soonish. Cheers.